All right, welcome back to the podcast. Today we have a very special guest. We have Taylin, the voice of Fade, and I'm so excited to talk to you. As soon as your character dropped, I had so many comments. Get Fade, get Fade, get Fade. And uh, as soon as I found out who it was, I just took a shot and here we are. Pretty, pretty fast turnaround. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. I'm very excited and thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I mean, we're, uh, everyone is super excited to have you a part of the Valorant community. I want to know, first off, how do you, how do you dive into something like that? And were you previously into video games at all? Not necessarily. I, I like didn't really play a lot of video games. I mean, I knew from like my cousins a little bit, just like, especially not like I did a play like a little PlayStation, but not very like on computer that much. Like, I mean, when I was younger, I played some like little games, but my idea of like gaming was more like Mario Brothers. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have that much um, knowledge about it. So I have to like really learn about what the game is and kind of like, like the Valorant, the Riot Games team was very, very helpful in like kind of teaching me because there is a lot going on. I mean, it's very complex. Yes. So it's not like a, you know, oh, you do this, you do this, and then you win. So it's like, there's like a big story mm -hmm. behind it. So I really, really enjoyed that. And getting to know this world was so much fun. The, that, it is a lot of information. And mm -hmm. I, I suspect it would be a lot easier to be one of the first characters. And I've heard this from a lot of voice actors. Because I've done, I've done podcasts with people who who were the first character in the game. So as the game goes on, they learn that knowledge with it. And then I've done characters where they've had to catch up on that knowledge. And you right now are the, the furthest person to catch up on all that knowledge. So I expect that it's a lot to intake. And I just want to know, like, what how, was it overwhelming at times? Or is it like... Did you feel like you had to be more in depth with all of the information or could you just feel kind of free about it and just kind of learn at your own pace? It was definitely overwhelming just because um, there's a lot of agents, there is different relationships between the agents and so much has been happening. So just catching up on the story and the agents and kind of like the little, so I had to like watch a lot of the videos of, you know, the story kind of elements of the agents interacting and like before going into battle scenes and just learning about the details of, you know, the ults and kind of those little details and how the game exactly works. And then going over learning about the agents and then where they are right now and how they ended up in Turkey and Istanbul. So it was definitely a lot, but so it was kind of like a crash course. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, I bet. That's, it's, all, it's always like, because a lot of people in my life, ever since I started doing this, they've picked up on Valorant things um, from, you know, TikToks or whatever, watching my stuff. And it's, it's so crazy that, that it is where it is and the fact that when we first started talking, you said something that I that I absolutely loved. You said that I'm I'm representing this this part of the world. You're representing Turkey, and I I, I love asking this question because it's it's something that gaming is doing well right now, very well, is representing. And you have all these agents in Valorant from all different parts of the world, and you're bringing in little little you know words or whatever from your culture and i want to know exactly what what that means to you to be able to represent something that big and do you think that's extremely cool or what i think that's extremely cool also because i was very surprised they're like oh wait like they're doing a turkish character in valorant mm -hmm. it was just like i mean it's not very common that there's like you know I mean, diversity is still something that's getting better mm -hmm. and that was something that we're still working on, but also having this game where every agent is from a different country. And then, you know, you don't really like see Turkey that much 
you know, it's not as represented as like, you know, friend, like France, like, or England or Italy. So yeah. it was just like very nice and shocking to me to be like, wow, they're doing this and I get to be a part of it. It was just like so mind blowing and just, I'm just very honored. And um, I think they did a great job with kind of showing the cultures and like little bits and pieces with, you know, fades kind of um, like the, the cats and everything. And then even the devil's eye. So like cats are kind of, they're everywhere in Turkey, especially in Istanbul. Cats are kind of like symbolic just because there's a lot of street cats everywhere. So they kind of like even little by little like wanted to capture um, some aspects and how they can incorporate that to the game. So I was very excited for that. Mm -hmm. It's really cool to, to be able to like, uh, especially in a parts of uh, like America where not all the time are people learning about these different cultures. And now when it comes to like a representation in a video game, like it opens eyes whether like a lot of people realize that we're learning maybe a little bit, but it can open doors and you can appreciate that character. And then you could also, you know, learn more and more. And then, you know, sometimes you can dive deep into Like I've done it before where I want to learn more about that culture because of the character. And I love learning about, you know, there's a character, Astra, she's from, I'm pretty sure Ghana. And like, I, I just love learning about the culture. I watched videos for hours and like, I just loved learning more about why she is the way that she is and how she represents that. So I think it's really great that we're doing that in video games as well. Yeah, I think that's amazing. Cause you know, you can tell how much thought is put into it. Cause I think like before, you know, years ago, like video games, they were just like character and they were more one dimensional. And now there's like so many backstories to it. And then it's amazing, like you said, how it like makes you wonder about the culture and you know, how, why the character is the way they are. So kind of without even knowing like Valorant, um, like getting people interested in that is like so amazing mm -hmm. just because I mean, maybe in normal life, like you wouldn't know about like Ghana or like maybe you wouldn't have thought about like, oh, like I want to learn more about Turkey. So it's just amazing how you're enjoying, you're playing the game, but you're also kind of like learning and it kind of like, like opening up your horizons and like kind of getting more culture around. So I think that's so nice. Yeah. I, I do want to ask like when, when it comes to the kind of the, the getting into the auditioning process and stuff like that, what, what was your experience like from, from the moment you, you first saw or got sent or however, uh, you got the audition to you. Yeah, so it is like secretive at first. You don't really mm -hmm. know what you're auditioning for. Yeah. Um, it was just kind of, you know, a more generic name. So I didn't really know what I was auditioning for. It was just kind of like, you know, you do a couple of the lines. Um, some, there were some, you know, like the English lines, some like Turkish lines. So you kind of like do that. And then your basic idea is, um, they give you a basic brief information about the character, but you don't really know exactly everything. So mm -hmm. then you get to the, then I, I did that. And then I got like a callback. So a callback is like when they want to see you again. So I went into the studio for that, um, like a recording studio. And then obviously because the pandemic, it was most people were on Zoom. So we had to do it, like I was in the studio, they connected everyone in the team via Zoom. So I had to do it there. And then um, and then I think I got the job after that. But I mean, the process was definitely, it was like fast, um, but I definitely like learned after the callback when they told me exactly, like when I got the job, okay, this is what it is. Mm -hmm. So they kind of leave you in the dark just because you know they don't want anything to give away and i wasn't able to like you know share anything and so it was 
I was lucky. We recorded it actually in um, beginning of February. So I didn't have to wait that long. So, oh, like this yeah. year? Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, I know. So, some other people are going to be really jealous about that one. I know. I know. People have to wait like eight months, a year. Yeah. And I was like, it's coming out in like, what, two months or something? So Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. I I know people who were just sitting on it for a long time. Uh-huh. And even like me, I was like itching and I was like constantly like messaging them like, oh, do you have any like updates? Like, because I wanted to like see pictures of Fade and they were still developing, you know, the effects. And um, so I still wanted to see like, oh, like what does she look like? And kind of all those. And they would uh, like send me some of the sketches of it mm -hmm. and some of her like rough cuts of her like performing the doing the alts and everything how what was the the original did you get a picture when you like auditioned or anything or like when you were developing anything i did get a picture that was like similar to how she's right now but like mm. not that much it was very much of like a first 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 draft look mm -hmm. that wasn't like very much detailed um I don't even remember. I feel like it's been a while, like not that much of a while, but like I've been, I started, I did my, I think my audition in, I don't know. I want to say November. I'm oh, not sure, wow. but it was like, um, it has been a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I love, cause I was literally going to ask you like how long, like what the timeline was on it. <laughs> and that's gotta be a lot better than you know, some of the other stuff that I've heard. So I'm glad that you didn't have to keep that in for too long. Yes, me too. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was, did they give you like uh, a code name at the beginning? Was it, did it, was her code name Bounty Hunter? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. No, no, it's, no, it's out there. I, it's a lot of, there. yeah, yeah. A lot of people, I don't know. I'm, I'm also very, you know, some people when they do interviews, they try to get things out of people when they like that they're not supposed to know or the other person's not supposed to say. I'm not like that because I'm probably more scared than you are of of Riot ever doing anything to me. Yeah. So <laughs> anytime anyone's accidentally slipped, I'm like, oh, God, like this. I can't believe this just happened. Well, uh, yeah, I feel like it's, it's the character is out, so I'm like more like relaxed on okay i'm not like giving mm. anything away yeah but, yeah i think it was like also known that it was like bounty hunter i guess because i do remember seeing like who's bounty hunter or mm -hmm. like but i yeah i didn't know her name like until it was like the day of the shooting and i was like what's her name <laughs> uh when it, when it comes to how much do you change your voice for doing fade um I feel like, well, with my, so I'm doing a Turkish accent. Um, and so I am like, I, I'm 23. I lived in Turkey for 18 years and now I'm in Los Angeles, but I can easily dive into my Turkish accent. And so my sound, my voice, I think kind of changes, changes when I speak Turkish or when I like speak in my Turkish accent, I think it's a little bit more. I guess rough. I already have a raspy voice, but I think it adds to that. Um, so I didn't like change it too much, but definitely changed it more in the alts when there was like more power and there was like more, you know, kind of, um, I was trying to be loud, but not, but without like raising my voice too much. Mm -hmm. Cause you can't really like, it was hard. Cause you, you need to like be loud without yelling. <laughs> So it's kind of like this risky thing in voice acting. You can't like just scream because like the mic is like right here. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have to put power in your voice to make it sound like it's like very loud, even though you're not actually like screaming because you don't want to hurt your voice because you have to keep going. Yeah. So I did change a little bit, but it wasn't like, you know, super drastic, I think. Yeah, I mean, I can hear the fact that you do voice fade, even just talking to you, but 
I wanted to know if like as as you are doing the voice if you feel as if you change your own voice um at all but i do um when it when it comes to the the backstory and everything that you had on fade um at the time of like pretty much finding her voice what what was what were certain things and that you were told or whatever that that you like what were the what was the backstory that they gave you on who she is and how did you find her voice and and give her bring her to life i think um her i don't even know like how much you guys know but um but they were just like telling me they really helped me like write games and like everyone at Valorant helped me with that. Um, like she's not definitely her character is like more like, you know, she's not like very like the sweet bubbly kind. Mm -hmm. She's more, you know, she's been through stuff. She has lost people. She has, you know, her power is like nightmares. So she is like constantly kind of like haunted in that way. So it was like also kind of helpful to see like how she's different than the other agents and how she's similar sometimes too. So um, just knowing about why, like, cause at first she thinks kind of like Valorant, like she doesn't trust them right away. And she thinks that, you know, they're like working against, but then like she starts to like gain trust when, um, you know, they see that oh wait we're actually fighting for the same thing and we can help each other so she has i feel like has some trust issues mm -hmm. and um kind of her background of like why she wants to work with Val the valorant team and like what she wants to get out of it and um so i think like we all like she does she's in the end like a caring person she um is not like she doesn't show her excitement or love through um you know being bubbly but um just also we were just talking about you know some lines I feel like they would say it like this way I don't think you know she would be because she's very smart and like very strategic so um and you can see from the lines that she says you know the nightmare ends for everyone but she's constantly living in that so she is constantly like haunted and in her own nightmares. So that kind of like creates this heaviness and she also has this, I feel like sense of urgency. So we would like talk about it if there was a line where we weren't sure, like, you know, and we would do like different options too. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not sure, do you know like why Fade kind of like joins Valorant? um not not exactly is it it's yeah I, I i'm not i'm not too confident in what i'm thinking so um i don't know are you saying that to like if i knew then you could talk about it and you don't want to talk about it yeah i feel like i'm i do know something but i'm not exactly sure if it's like a secret or not so i'm just gonna just don't just don't even say it yeah, 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 yeah. No. If it's but if yeah. it's out there, then people will know. So. Exactly. If you know what I'm talking about, you'll know. It's not it's not a big thing, but um it's just that, you know, as everyone in the game, like Fade has her own fears and have her own like, you know, um goals. So mm -hmm. that's what I say. Yeah, it's probably it's probably best. So uh <laughs> um I had a I had a question. Um, I totally, it just totally slipped me. Um. Oh man, I was sitting on it too. Uh. What what, what was your, what was like the reaction in, um, the, what did you think of the reaction to fade in like the public eye? Like, were you, were you pleased and happy and excited to, to finally get to share what you've been working on or? Yeah, absolutely. I was very excited. And um, I 
from what I have seen, I'm not like, I didn't look at like, I don't have that much. I mean, I have an Instagram and a Facebook, but I don't have that much like social media, mm-hmm. like Twitter or something to kind of like dive into like what people think. But from what I've seen, like I was happy to kind of hear that people did like it and, you know, did like enjoy it and like enjoyed like some of the fade lines. So, and yeah, and just like kind of comparing her to other agents and it was just like very funny and um I was glad to see the reaction too and I think um like overall I thought it was like positive so um yeah it was definitely nice and like good to hear when people enjoy what you do and you know it doesn't like because it's like a voice thing and she's constantly talking in your ear so you do want to you know like it and not be like yeah. oh shut up mm-hmm. so it is good to know that the voice you know matches to fade and you know creates that and like I want people to you know enjoy playing her yeah and using her so I really really enjoy playing fade I just want to let you know thank you but also more importantly oh yeah she is badass yeah she's pretty badass like she's has some sick moves more importantly though i do want to i always give credit to the riot writing staff and mm-hmm. every the direct the director um but also i want to say a amazing job to you for the character and your performance on the character was phenomenal and i loved every part of it and i i just want to say great job on it and i it's 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 amazing work Thank you so much. That means a lot. Yes, because I don't feel, and I'll say this every podcast till the day I die, I don't feel like enough people give credit to performances in video games. Uh, as a fan, I know a lot of voice actors will tell other voice actors that their performance was amazing or whatever because they know it. They, they've been around it and stuff like that. But the more I've dove deep into this, I understand that it, a character like fade or any other valorant agent wasn't just reading lines it was it was actual character like developing the character developing the voice and how she would say it how she would think like in this situation blah 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 all of that is a performance in it it was it was genuinely amazing so amazing job to you thank you so much yes it's like you don't get to see the active parts but when like i was saying some lines i had to physicalize it yes to get in it like Mm -hmm. the action lines and the kind of like you know going like before the battle or like when you're in the battle Mm -hmm. and like the alt lines like you can't just like sit and like i wasn't sitting doing any of the lines there was a chair but we were like like should i sit i don't think i should sit down yeah because it is like active you know so you kind of like to get in it and you know your body like reflects on your voice so if you're jumping and like kind of like moving and the thing is you can't move too much because it will pick up your movement the sound mm-hmm. yeah so you kind of have to learn like moving your arms and there were so many things where me and um um like tony um from riot games who like directed me we were just like okay like it's kind of like the hand thing and like you know like when uh, fate is like talking to someone who she just you know took out so like those lines and kind of like you know like the spike and everything so it kind of have to like physicalize it so it like reflects on the voice Mm -hmm. it is definitely like not how some people might think where you're just like sitting down and just saying the lines yeah like just it's not as i don't feel like people like give enough credit and that's what I, I that's why I like I love to to appreciate that and tell people how great it was because because it's the truth and I, and I think everyone deserves to hear that that it was a great performance. Thank you. Yes, no problem. Um, I uh, we can we can do I I like to sprinkle out some voice lines um throughout the the podcast. Are there any that you remember that you really liked if not i i just like to ask that question but if you don't have any that is perfectly fine 
There definitely is. Because I even remember some of like the movements I made um, while recording. There was this one line I'm trying to remember. Uh, I can't like exactly remember it, but it was something like, you know, I know it's not this, like it's, it was something like kind of snarky and like didn't even hurt or something like that. Mm -hmm. I can't exactly remember, but I remember some like snarkiness in it. And obviously I remember the alts just because it was just like, take a lot. And like, you know, like the whole energy, cause I need to like get ready for it. And like, you know, nightmare, take them. Mm -hmm. And like the whole kind of like going, it was like, you know, pouring cold water on you uh -huh. and like, you know, like flush out. Mm -hmm. um, and then kind of like, I remember some of the Turkish lines, oh, baby, or um, I mean, there's just, there was a lot of lines. I mean, there, I do remember them. And yeah. if I like, you know, think about it, like they'll just pop up because we did do it a lot of times. It hasn't been that long. So I do like remember them, but if you have any. Yes. Like, well, so I, I mean, there is, there's an entire website with every single line and I can, there's a little like triangle play button. And if I just click it, it plays it. So I did go through a lot of these. And so, um, when you, so I would, I don't know if you know this, but like, so you, you know, like you pick, you pick your character before the game starts. And then, so you set your character will say a line before mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And yours is, uh, everyone is afraid of something. Mm -hmm. If you want to do that one, that one. Sure. Everyone's afraid of something. That's amazing. That's so cool. That's. I do remember that line very specifically. It never, and I'll, and, and does not get old ever to hear. So we do have, like different, um, like versions of it, like kind of like, you know, there was one where it was like, everyone's afraid of something. Mm -hmm. Like just different inflictions on different. Yeah, words. like some like more high on the end and kind of more pause yeah. on this and like. Yeah, you just gotta exercise every possibility, and mm -hmm. but see that's that's the thing that I hear a lot is you don't exactly know which one they took, so everyone's kind of like. A little bit afraid to say it because they're like i don't want people to think i said it wrong and i'm like no one i get that and i understand that fear but like if you just say it it's gonna be it's gonna be great it's just it's gonna be fine either way there is i think fade might have the most lines with cuss words in it yeah i think i don't i've i've seen i know two there's one calling someone an asshole and then, I, I, which I've been trying to find, but I cannot find it anywhere. Um, and then she, I know she says sh shit or something. Um, which I think there's only one other. Sh yeah, I think she swears in Turkish. Oh, really? I think so. I mean, I'm not, I I'm not saying that you're wrong. I just have not seen that one. And I don't know if I would notice if she swore in Turkish. So... Yeah, because I do remember there are some like Turkish swear words. Okay. Um, I do I do want to know a little bit about um uh, about your your growing up in you said you grew up in Turkey, right? Mm-hmm. Um how what was that like in uh did you is there anything about like coming to the United States that is is if I obviously it's gonna be a different culture, but I just want to know a little bit more about Turkey and like the culture around Turkey. Yeah, absolutely. So yes, I moved here when I was 18, but my family still lives in Istanbul. Mm -hmm. So I also like go like once or twice a year and it just depends on like work, but also like seeing family too. Um, it was, it was lovely growing up. I mean, also it was just, just like kind of every other place in that way. Like when I, where I show pictures of like, oh, it looks just like here. <laughs> like, yes, we don't like ride camels to yeah. like school or anything. So mm -hmm. um, I lived in the European side of Istanbul. 
it was amazing, definitely. So you can see there's this bridge in Istanbul that kind of connects two continents, Europe and Asia. So you can cross a bridge and then go to the Asian continent. And so you can basically like change continents in like 10 minutes. So that's was always like nice and like kind of like I had people living in the Asian continent, like friends, and we would kind of there would sometimes be traffic always going there. Mm -hmm. um, but it's kind of also like surrounded by, you know, seas and like ocean. So like the Mediterranean Sea and like the Black Sea. So I always got to see a lot of like good nature in that sense, because it was like definitely we have a lot of amazing beaches and a lot of like nice, beautiful like forests so I was able to grow up I also grew up in like a more suburban area in Istanbul so I would like ride my bikes and kind of live that more um like in the nature life and there's also like the big part of it I feel like is you know hospitality and like family is very big because it's a more um collectivistic culture where you know the community is very important. Your neighbors are very important. There's a lot of holidays where you get together with your families that you celebrate. And food is something that brings you together. And like food is like mm -hmm. one of my favorite things about Turkey. Just like, um, there's just like so many good dishes. Like there's this one thing called like manta. It's like Turkish dumplings that I love. And there's also like these desserts, like baklava, it's like very, popular everywhere mm -hmm. um and there's this thing called lahmacun it's like this really thin like kind of like a pizza but then you like wrap it and it kind of turns into like this wrap mm -hmm. so it's like very hard to explain but also there's like you know um just because we're close to the ocean and everything in the seas we get a lot of you know fish and kind of um having this huge um like table of food and like inviting family and friends is just like a part of the culture of where we all like dine together and there's all these like traditional foods and there's just like this drink this alcoholic beverage called rukka that people always like drink mm -hmm. um and it's always been good I was kind of like lucky in a way that like movies at the time would like come late to turkey so like there would be harry potter would be out but we would get it a year later mm -hmm. so it was still like you know technology and everything at the time would like kind of come a little bit later but i was like thankful for that so we would like growing up we would like play like sports on the streets or like you know doing things like that rather than like you know having an ipad and like being on social media because growing up like social media wasn't a thing until I was like more in high school um but I mean Turkey was just great I mean like with every country there was like you know things happening here and there but it's also because it's such a cent in a such a central place that um like you can go to Europe you can go to Asia and then like kind of the Middle East so it's like kind of like in a center of the world where it's so easy to travel around. Mm -hmm. So that was like always like very, very nice. Yeah. It sounds awesome. I get it. I I I like like growing up where I grew up and stuff. I grew up in the central of the United States. So when it comes to a lot of the people around me, I grew up in a town where it everyone would either leave for a year and then come back and then they would just be in that like in that i grew up 2000 people in my town and it was very it felt very sheltered from other cultures and anything else it felt just very just one dimensional when it came to what i was around and what was exposed to me and so I, it, it's just really cool to now be able to, you know, open my eyes and learn about other things. And I love to hear the experiences of other people and, um, 
it's just it's very beautiful to have that in my life now yeah i think that's amazing i feel like the most important thing is like having that curiosity because mm -hmm. i mean now that you i can see that you have that curiosity so it's just like opens up so many things to learn because i mean the world is huge there's so many different cultures and yeah but we all like you know have something common so you can always like even if someone is from a totally different place you can still like connect with them mm -hmm. yeah i think i think it like you said the curiosity because a lot of people who and i i don't i don't mean to bash other people but like when people aren't curious and they kind of just are a little tunnel vision it's hard to have empathy or anything for other people that come from different cultures or who might not have what you had or have more than what you had like it it's not it, it's just about learning and appreciating um about yourself and your culture and then and then also opening your eyes to other people and and just being a, a good human to everyone and and learning and stuff like that absolutely that's so important yes i i remember i did i had um some kids in my class who were from turkey and i remember yeah, no just, way yeah just one distinct memory that i had was in a line and they said that they were going back to turkey for the like over the break of school and that I, that's one core memory I have from being a child. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, I did have friends who like sometimes would like, you know, were half American and like would go to the States, but then come to Turkey for the summer. I feel mm. like summer is like a nice time to like visit Turkey. Yeah. What's the, what's the climate like in Turkey? We have all four seasons. So like, you know, our winter is cold um but our summer is really hot mm. so summer is pretty hot um but it's also like like i said there's a lot of like beaches and everything so you can get cooled pretty easily um and the scenery is beautiful so it's definitely why there's a lot of tourists during mm. the summer yes yeah it was uh, i i figured it in my head the only thing i thought it was the heat but i didn't i didn't know if you guys get you guys snow yeah, we do get snow. Okay. I feel like now with climate change, not as much as we used to, but mm. we still do. Especially yeah. this year, there was a lot. But yeah, I, I, uh, what, what made you go to the states? Um. Well, I wanted to explore also like acting here. Mm -hmm. So mostly just you know, um, seeing what opportunities um there are, and kind of like expanding. So like. Mm -hmm. I work both in Turkey and in the States. So I just wanted to, I also love the industry here. I feel like there's a lot of amazing opportunities and a lot of stories. Mm -hmm. So there's just like a huge range. So I kind of wanted to, you know, oh, I'm young. Like, let me, um, you know, explore and um, do as much as I can. And I want to tell, be part of good stories and good projects. And I thought it was like a good place to be for that. Mm -hmm. And like my foot is like, you know, Turkey is always going to be there. Like I'm always like going back and forth. So. Yeah. That's it's, it's pretty, pretty common thing I would say is, is to do that. Uh, in where, where's the, the, I like, where's your head for the next five years? Like, what do you, what do you want to do more of what do you want to do less of or whatever that is where where is your focus at well there's nothing less of um but definitely definitely doing more of you know i would love to do like big like feature films and even like you know tv series and maybe like for streaming like telling stories that are not told before and kind of um, more dramatic or maybe like I would love to do like a um, like psychological thriller, mm -hmm. something like that. I really love those, like a plot twist kind of a movie. There are so many directors that I would love to work with um, both in Turkey and in the States and then kind of like be in a place where it's more, what I do is more global. So I would love to be in more like global projects where it's like, either it's in 
based in the US or like somewhere else, but kind of being able to be part of stories that like everyone gets to see and everyone gets to connect with and like that will give something to the community, like, and like just do something that people will enjoy, like either learn from, get a laugh from it. Maybe they use it for escape, but sometimes it's just like for comfort or just to enjoy, but like stuff that are also visually pleasing. Um, like, I don't know, it'd be amazing to be like in an, um, like a um, Wes Anderson film or like an A24 kind of a thing where there's also a lot of good production design and just working with people who love what they do and like put effort and like respect into it. Mm -hmm. But I would also really enjoy like, you know, voice acting too. So definitely would love to do like more of like the video games and love to see where Fade goes and like the new things. Cause whenever a new agent um, is introduced, there's like, you know, you have new lines to do. So definitely working with Valorant more and maybe even doing like with voice for like animations, like Pixar, or like Disney, I feel like their stuff is for every age out there. Mm-hmm. So I think that's very, very amazing. So definitely full on, I would love to continue acting. And also in the future, I would love to produce as well. Awesome. I, I love storytelling so much. One of my, one of my biggest goals um, when I was coming up uh, or growing up and and everything is i wanted to do i wanted to be a filmmaker and i mean it's a lot a, a big part of me still does i just once covid hit a lot of stuff was a little a little more difficult and i kind of put some stuff on the back burner but i did a lot of um cinematography and i would do like weddings or fashion shows and stuff like that and so i i love to hear about things and I love to talk to actors who who are really passionate about what they do and um who really like live and breathe all this stuff cuz it's just it's so refreshing to to hear someone talk about something that they love so much and it's something that I share the love for I I don't act or anything but I love the industry just so much Exactly. I feel like there's like so many things to do. And I recently, my parents were visiting me and I, we went to Universal Studios and we went to the studio tour. And just like, I was just like, once again, like so amazed by this movie magic and like the things that we can create. Mm-hmm. I was just like left like so inspired. I was like, this is amazing. Like, I mean, like it lives on. Mm-hmm. And there's so much work and effort that's put in it too. I mean, it's not just the actors. There's like a whole crew oh, yeah. that works on it. And it's just like everything, everyone, it's like a, this big like teamwork group project. And then you hope that like when you finish that, the audience will get to enjoy it. Mm-hmm. And so just like seeing that and everything is just very inspiring. And I mean, there's no limit to it. That's why I love like filmmaking and creating and with like, you know, animation too. Like there's just so much space for creativity. Yeah. There's a lot of, there's a lot of like, just like you said, there's a lot of moving parts in when it comes to a film or anything. And there's a lot of underrated things that, that, you know, if you're really into it, I love things that you can, that if you're really into something, like you can appreciate such little things like set design or just anything like that. And you could really just be like, wow, like, that script was written amazing. Like just something that the normal person wouldn't think about. And I, I love things like that. Uh, we, I agree too. <clears throat> what's up? I do too. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, I do want to make sure that we, we get, uh, all the voice lines that I would want. Yes. Yes. Let's do more. Um, be quick. Have you gotten to, to speak with, any other voice actors yet? Yeah, some of them like reached out. They were very, very sweet. <laughs> um, it was just like welcoming me to the family. So I did get to like speak with some of them on social media. Uh, any, what, do you know which ones? I spoke to Neon. I spoke to, um, 
I'm trying to let me remember real quick. Good. I spoke the KO. Mm, I, I, Gabe is, he's one of my favorite. Yeah, he's favorite very, people. very sweet. He's also one of the most, I, I don't know if you've gotten in depth into any of his work, but he's one of the most talented people I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, he's Emma. done a lot. And yeah. It's, it's crazy. He's constantly working as well. Like, that dude does not does not let off the gas at all which is so it's so inspiring to to be exactly, around someone you know, like that yeah and it's just so nice when like you are like constantly working but you're so like very you know generous and like very nice to the people you work with mm -hmm. i mean it's nice when like you see someone who's doing a lot of work but it's also a good person then it's just like okay now it makes sense yeah the the thing I, I always say this to people, I say, I love, the best feeling in the world to me is when I meet someone and they blow my expectations out of the water. There's no better feeling than, than having a great conversation with someone and leaving that being like, they were amazing. That was so amazing. And, and Gabe is, is one of those people that, that, that happens to me every time I speak to him, where I'm just like, that dude is awesome. Like, he's the coolest person in the world. So, I, I just, I, I, I love that guy. Yeah, Miranda also reached out, um, who uh, plays... <clears throat> Sky? Sky, yeah. Yeah, she's, she's one of my best friends. We talk all the time. And no way. <laughs> yeah, she, well, I did, she was the first person I did a podcast with, and we became really great friends. And Yeah, she's also in LA. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and my, my mom absolutely adores her as well. <laughs> I, it's, she, my mom will call me. Uh, we'll get to the voice lines in a second, but I, I just want to say this really quick. My mm -hmm. mom, my mom will call me sometimes and be like, Hey, is Miranda doing any work right now? And I'm like, mom, I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't know if Miranda's busy right now because like most of the things she does, she can't tell me. And like, I, I don't know, mom. <laughs> so. She always, she's always checking up on Miranda. Um, well, uh, their teeth will chatter in the cold in the, in the cold. Oh, wow. Their cheek, their teeth will chatter in the cold and dark. Mm -hmm. Their teeth will chatter in the cold and dark. You're kind of scary. You do that. He is scary. <laughs> She's Maybe. very scary. He does have that. Oh, uh, I do want to get a, uh, a one with a Turkish mm -hmm. word. Uh, okay, so I'm going to do the translation and because I don't want to mess up anything. It says, they think they can steal from us. Come the hell on. This is... Yeah, this is funny. Oh, yeah, I love that line. Wait, they say you think you can mess with us? They think they can steal from us? Oh. They think they can steal from us? Adilan? This will be funny. Mm. So good. It's so good. Uh, there, this one is also a Turkish one. It, uh, it's, hey, eyes open. We have a job to do. Which it's hey, I think it's hey in Turkish. Is it H O P? Ah, hop. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like hop, oh, eyes open. We have a job to do. Is that the right translation? Is it only it's H O P? Just, yeah, it says H O P. Yeah, it's hope is not like hi. It's kind of like like hey, like. Mm. Okay, I got you. I, uh, I really want... I'm trying to find this one that says asshole in it, and I can't find it. Um, maybe I can... 
Is, was there... Because um, I know at the beginning when they were doing different lines with cuss words in it that they they didn't know if they were allowed to do it or not. And so I'm wondering what changed to now that we have a character with multiple. I have no idea. We didn't speak about that. Ah, okay. Um. Oh yeah, it's sweet dreams, asshole. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was English. Yeah. Do you want me to say it? Oh Is yes, it yeah. Go off the swear. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sweet dreams, asshole. <laughs> mm. Okay, we'll do one more, and then and then we can wrap this up, and and uh. Yeah, however many you like. I um, loved you. May maybe we can do a couple more. Maybe not. Yeah. Just one more. We could do a couple. Yeah. Give them darkness, Omen. I'm like trying to remember this one. Was this like during the in the battle or is it like getting ready? It's like it's like getting ready. It's like in the um in in the pre round. Mm -hmm. Okay. Give them darkness, Omen. That's good. Do you? I, I do want to prepare you. I don't know if you've gotten this yet. Um, but as your character goes along and as more people find out that you're the fade voice actor, you're gonna you're gonna get asked for things and you're gonna get told to do things, and it's gonna get quite annoying. I'm pretty sure. Told to do some lines. No, the the lines. I'm sure that that's probably gonna be with it, but told to um to make your character better or make your character worse or whatever like they think that you have the power to do that mm. you're also going to get asked for something called a riot gun buddy i don't know if you've gotten asked for that yet so it's an in-game cosmetic that only people from riot can give you and it goes on your on your gun and it shows people that the riot employee gave you that that thing the riot gun buddy and a lot of people will spam the voice actors for the riot gun buddy and it's only a matter of time before you get when you get your first comment that says can i have the riot gun buddy you'll know what i warned you about because after that it's just going to keep coming Oh my gosh. Yeah. And so I'm just, it's just a fair warning. That Thank that, you. Yeah, that, that's going to happen. And just so you know, it, ex also so you know what they're talking about. Because a lot of times people don't know at first. And they're like, why are people asking me for this thing? I don't even know what it is. And so that it'll happen. Yeah, I wouldn't have no idea. Yeah. And also... If you, if you ever have, if you don't have anyone else to ask, if you ever have any questions about anything that's happening or going on or what something means or any, like any comment or anything, I, I, I've, I'm a seasoned vet in explaining things to people when it comes to the video game, uh, the video game world. So you always, my DM is always open with you so you can ask me anything you need. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Yes, no, absolutely yeah, no problem. Too. Yeah. Um, also, if you uh, do, you plan on ever playing Valorant? Like, so the thing is, I need like a PC computer. Mm -hmm. So whenever I like, I get my hands on it, I will. Okay. Also, I am itching to play. Also, uh, I've done this with multiple voice actors who have not played the game. Um, and me and Miranda do it quite frequently. We're setting something up right now. If you ever want to, I mean, I'd probably do it for content, but if you ever want to do like a Zoom call just like this, and I can go through, um, we just hop in a Zoom call and I'll share my screen 
and you would be able to see what I'm doing and uh, I could explain things in the game um, and even just do some just play around and show you the maps and different things about the maps and lore and stuff like that which I've done before and um, it's quite fun but you don't have to but if that's something you're interested in mm -hmm. I just leave that offer on yeah. the table yeah no that would be good because I feel like I would be very lost yeah it's it's a lot to you think it's a lot to to take in at first like wait till you get in the game that's a lot to take in mm -hmm. that that cause I've heard people I got motion sick blah 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 like a lot of the voice actors are uh who have tried to play are is a little um it's a little it's shaky not like a, you know easy game oh like, not at all there's a lot going on it's not it's not like you know like oh i'm gonna let my five-year-old play this mm -hmm. yeah do you want to do another line yes i absolutely do uh many people died here their fear still lingers Many people died here. Their fear still lingers. That was a really good one. We'll we'll try to find one more and then and then we can. Um. Oh, okay. Um it says Omen that gave me the chills, brother. The good kind, but the brother is, is it, a, it's A B I, Abby. Abby, yeah. Omen, that gave me the chills, Abby. But the good kind. Mm, perfect way to end that off. That was amazing. Maybe like an alt similar action line too. What's up? Like an action like kind of like a similar alt line do you want to do your alt line like one of them like maybe not the one that's just like nightmare take them because that will take a lot but what about face your fear you don't have to scream it but yeah i can do it like a mid yeah just some just a mid that's yeah. fine Because <laughs> I don't even know which one they used. Does it play? Yeah, I think it's just like face your fear. Mm -hmm. Face your fears. Mm. I think. What's up? Me trying to do it without like doing like too much because oh. I do remember it was like kind of a little loud. Wait, oh, I, were you gonna? I thought you were doing it again. Oh no. No, I was. I was gonna say you don't have to do that one again. I was kind of just sitting there. Um, yeah, that's. Uh, okay. Wait, I'm sorry. I see another one. What is it? One dream ends, another begins. One dream ends, another one begins. Okay, perfect. I'm going to close this out so I don't keep looking over there. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much. You are, you're such a sweet person. And, I, and you know, the Valorant community, it, we're so lucky to have you and, and be able to share this experience with you. And I'm so excited to, to see you go further with other things in your career and also uh further with fade um and I, i'm just i'm so excited for you and i'm so happy for you so congratulations and welcome thank you so much and i'm very excited to be a part of the valorant family mm -hmm. and yeah thank you so much for speaking with me and helping me out and yeah i will definitely like reach out to you when yes i might have some like questions anything day or night just shoot me a dm and i will do my best to uh, be at whatever you need um, in this navigating this world of, of of gaming and Valorant. So, yeah, like I said, super excited to, to have you and um, 
yeah that's gonna be the end of the podcast thank you guys for listening and i'll see you guys next time peace çok teşekkürler herkese izlediğiniz için <gülüyor>